So it is time to start the frame jig project, which has been called Skynet. So this project all started, I guess we could say back in January, right after I finished my wife's bike. And I put some pictures up on Instagram, and I said that I did not want to build any more bikes until I built or bought a proper frame jig, because the old way that I was doing it just was not working out. <laughs> I made a video talking about that if you really want to see it. But on that post, PVD commented, he's like, hey, just copy my frame jig. And I had seen his before, and it really is just, I'm going to, I mean, I don't want to nerd out over it too much just yet because we're going to do that throughout this whole build process. But he contacted me, we, you know, we started chatting over email, and he basically said, he was like, why don't you just take my fixture and, for lack of a better word, dumb it down and make it more accessible? And so a little bit of time went by, you know, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really have the time to put in to design it, and he beat me to it. <laughs> so, basically, he designed a much more accessible jig based off of his own system. He uses the same principles, but, again, instead of, you know, CNC machined parts and things like that, part of the design intent was to have it so somebody like me with a manual lathe and a manual milling machine can make it no problem and have one of the best frame jigs out there and you know my opinion and his of course and again I'm not gonna go into too much detail about well all the details just yet I am gonna leave some links down below to go to PVD's webpage where you can check out the original system and the post he just made about this upcoming the Skynet system so in other words, this is his design, and you know we ended up kind of sort of working together on it. So we were emailing back and forth throughout the process, and I'd like to think that I gave him some good ideas, but really I probably just told him what not to do when designing it. <laughs> now you may also notice I got another awesome tool in my shop, and it's this welding table right here. So this is going to be the base of the system. So PVD used a Rhino cart which is a smaller and maybe a little bit more portable of an option. But I got this one. It's a Sigmund System 16. And it's actually, so it's an imperial table. So that means all of these holes that you see are exactly two inches apart and they're 5 5.8 diameter hole. And I actually got this from the company is called Quantum Machinery Group. They're semi-local to me. I was able to drive and pick it up. But they had this as a promotion set, you know, it came with all these tools that you see here as well as the table for a ridiculously good deal. Now, it is worth noting, yeah, this is an expensive tool, but one of the just most amazing things that I like about this system is that it's not just a frame jig. This is also an awesome welding table that I'm going to be able to use for all the other stuff that I do, not even related to bikes. But even then, just having this nice big flat surface and all sorts of just endless options is certainly really awesome. Now, I think now is also a good time to talk about, with this project, I have to give you guys the talk. I don't know if your parents gave it to you or maybe your friends in high school did, but yes, we're going to have the talk. The talk about metric versus imperial. Alright, <laughs> so... I know a lot of you guys are going to be pulling your hair out because this is an imperial table and we build bikes in metric. Now the drawing package and everything that we're going to end up sharing, all the measurements are in imperial and that's for a very simple reason because we're in the United States. So a lot of the fasteners, the tools that we use, you know, it's quarter twenty counter bore, five sixteenths by 18 or whatever it is and you know basically the most common tools that we are using here in America that's what we designed around now it would be absolutely trivial to convert the entire thing to 100% metric you would just need to change over some of the fasteners and then for like the cosine bar system on there instead of 9 inches make it what I don't know what that would be 250 millimeters or whatever that is but basically if I, had to, if I had to sum it up in one sentence, if you don't like swapping between Imperial and Metric, you should not be building bikes. 
because everything around bikes is a complete mess. Just remember the golden rule of 25.4, and then you'll be fine. All right, so no complaining about metric and imperial. But I think that pretty much covers it for this video. I wanted to keep it short and sweet for today. I've finished up the drawings. I'm going to order the material very soon, and as soon as that starts coming in, it'll really you know, kick off this whole series and we'll have the whole system built up and and then at the same time I'm going to build my next bike so those two things are kind of going to overlap a little bit but I think it's perfect timing so thanks for watching.